Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com. Today we're at the Heart Valve Summit in Chicago, Illinois, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Bob Bono, who is a professor of cardiology and a past president of the American Heart Association. Bob, nice to have you here. Thank you, Adam. Happy to be here. So as you may know, we're answering questions that were posted up at Heart Valve Surgery, and uh, Dr. Bono, we got a question from Kim. Mm -hmm. And Kim writes in, Adam, I have a bicuspid aortic valve with a valve size of 0.6 mm -hmm. and a gradient of 80. Mm -hmm. When can I expect to have valve surgery? Great question, Kim. Uh, I mean, the first thing that we always tell our patients is that we have no crystal ball. That we, don't, we don't know all the ins and outs, but we do know a lot about this condition. It's a very common condition. It occurs in, you know, one and a half to two percent of the population. So you have a very common condition where we know a fair amount. What I don't know about you, Kim, is your age. That's a factor. And, uh, you know, whether you want to become pregnant. Are you still in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a time in your life, but that's a consideration. That would be uh, some bearing, but getting back to your question, you have a very tight valve, uh, assuming this has been assessed uh, very, very uh, carefully and adequately and uh, correctly. Um, if that's the case, uh, you fit into a, a group of patients where there's a very high likelihood that you will need to have surgery over the uh, next uh, couple of years. likely to develop symptoms, which could be shortness of breath or chest discomfort or lightheadedness, uh, or the valve might get even tighter with time such that your physicians become even more concerned. Now, not knowing the discussions you've had with your doctors, I would say that it's very important to have that discussion with your doctors, and if you've not seen a specialist in this condition, a cardiologist who sees lots of patients with aortic stenosis that you probably should do that and really get, get more input as to what your next steps might be because you do have a high likelihood of requiring surgery and you want to be in the hands of a group of people who know exactly the right things to do and if you do need surgery, the right surgeons to send you to so that you can have the surgery performed in a center where there's very low risk and a very good outcome. Uh, so in a, in a a center that performs lots of aortic valve replacement surgery, your risk should be quite low with a very good long-term outcome. But the important, important point is to have that discussion with your physicians and make sure that you're in the right safety net to have this done. The other thing I'd, I'd point out is that should you develop any symptoms, and with this degree of aortic stenosis, the chances are that you might develop symptoms over the course of the next several years, you don't want to ignore them. Uh, it's quite safe to wait uh, until you have symptoms, but as soon as you do have symptoms, it's no longer so safe, and that's when you want to have the surgery done. And in some cases, because of the high likelihood that this may happen in the short term, many times uh, we recommend early surgery when the valve is this tight, just because it's so um, predictable that is going to happen uh, at some point in the near future. Be certain that the measurements are accurate. You may, that may require some other tests to validate the uh, current information you have and confirm that the valve is indeed as tight as it appears to be. Um, but then let's uh, have some very careful discussions with your physicians about the next steps. Well, uh, Kim, I hope that was helpful for you and also for the other patients who are watching that uh, this video. So, and to, to you, Dr. Bono, I just want to thank you for all that you've done over your, your incredible career. Um, it really seems like you have just pursued healthy hearts your whole life. And on behalf of the patients and the caregivers in our community, I just want to thank you for all that you do. And thanks for stopping by and sharing this information with us. Thanks, Adam. And keep up the good work and sending all the important messages out to so many patients who have valve problems. Well, thanks so much.